Hey YouTube, kind of a simple video today. Wanted to stream it down and uh, not go necessarily into a big extensive showcase video, although there's more of those planned coming up. I just had a little bit of a topic in mind and wanted to put together a little video talking about it with just a handful of cards just to kind of uh, make the point. One of the things I've been thinking about a lot, and it's been it's been the subject of a lot of videos, is that a lot of people are focusing on the investment aspect of sports cards, you know, the prices, and obviously there's some cards that are definitely going up. A lot of Michael Jordan cards with the documentary and things like that, and now some King Griffey Jr. cards are going up. And there was a video by uh, Eric, Those Back Pages, and I'll link the video in the description for you if you, for some reason you haven't already checked it out. And he was kind of focusing in on the fact that, you know, there's more to the hobby than just value. And sometimes you can see some opportunities if you're willing to look past, you know, the great on the card holder or the fact that not everything has to be the, the new hotness. And there are plenty of opportunity. And what I think an underlying theme that he kind of hit on a little bit is that there are opportunities there if you're willing to look. And there are cards that are under the radar if you're willing to pay attention. But another aspect of it and an angle that I want to take on it a little bit as well is that kind of in this time where we've had where we have this opportunity for kind of self-reflection, it becomes really easy to kind of obsess over either what we want to have or what we could have kind of looking to an opportunity to buy something new or maybe you're in a position where you can't and you're kind of looking on for other people and seeing that they're buying things. And it's also kind of a good opportunity as well, and this part's free. Sometimes it's an opportunity to look back and look at your own collection and see maybe if there are some hidden gems that you bought in the first place for some reason, but maybe haven't looked at in a while. So I wanted to talk about that a little bit. And also I wanted to show you kind of an unusual card in the collection that uh, I was digging through a little bit the other day and I thought that this would be kind of a fun thing to have a video on. But first I do want to talk about some of the more recent stuff. But I'm going to show you a couple of cards that have been featured on the channel in the not too distant past, but then I'll show you one that has never been featured on the channel and I'll kind of explain a little bit behind it. So first one here is going to be this one. So this is the 98 Donruss Crusade, D Carlos Delgado. So this was definitely in a pickup video in the last uh, maybe like six months or so. But still, kind of a really fun card to look at. And if you like your shiny cards, this is a pretty good one. So this is the green one. Number 250. But a really awesome card for the collection. And kind of a fun one to kind of go back through. I was digging through some of the boxes and I saw that one there. And I thought that was kind of an awesome one. So that's for the Delgado collection. And these ones that I'm going to show you today are all for player collections. But they've all got their own story. The Delgado one is relatively known because it's still a recent collection that I've been working on. Now this next one is for a collection I've been working on for a long time. I've been, I've already, you know, if you've watched any of my videos in the last while, you know, I ram it down people's throat how much I collect uh, Mike Medano cards. So I'm not going to spend too much time explaining that part, but I do want to show you this card. Now this one's been featured on the channel, I'm sure, probably in, maybe in the last year, maybe a little longer. But this one here is an example of kind of hidden gems in plain sight, because on the surface you would look at this card and say, hey, you know, that's pretty neat. It's kind of a nice shiny gold card. But this one here is uh, the StarQuest Gold, which is the 4-star. And it is numbered to 100. And this one came out of a fairly low-end product. So this is Upper Deck Choice, 98.99. And this was basically the one-year replacement for Collector's Choice, which, as you know, is kind of a starter brand, made generally for kids. But these cards, and the Medano is probably not the best example, but they have this for basketball, and they have this for football, and they have this for baseball. Try finding StarQuest Gold. Type that into eBay, and if I can find one, a good example of a completed auction for one, I'll show it to you on the screen as well. But these things go for absolutely crazy amounts depending on the player you're picking up. And if you're talking basketball or football or even baseball, some of these go for absolutely crazy amounts. And they're just flat out a lot tougher than you'd think. Because uh, although the product itself was really inexpensive when it first came out, uh, these were scattered to the wind throughout a lot of, you'd have to open a lot of boxes to try to pull one of these. And trying to pull one of your favorite player, you know, good luck to you. But it is kind of a cool card, and it's one of those kind of hidden keys to my collection that I enjoy the most, because I've got other cards that are on paper much rarer, but these do not come up every day. So it's kind of a fun card for me to have. So I wanted to show that to you, because this one hasn't been featured in a while. Now these two are actually going to flank the card that I want to feature the most on this video. And I'm, I need to give you a little quick background on it so that it'll make a lot more sense and then you'll kind of understand why I decided to show you this card in almost its own standalone video. So I want to talk about a player who I used to have as kind of a side player collection. I've still got the cards and I may go back to adding some more pieces to it at some point in the future, but I haven't collected them in a while. A player named Marion Hosa. Now Marion Hosa was a hockey player uh, who's been retired for a couple of years now, 
But Marion Hossa was a player who's probably kind of a borderline Hall of Famer, and I'll give you a little background on Marion Hossa, and then I'll explain how this plays into the card. So Marion Hossa started off his career in North America playing for the Ottawa Senators. So he was drafted by them, and within a couple of years became kind of a star. He was a great scorer and a pretty good playmaker. But as his uh, star started to ascend a little bit, the Ottawa Senators really weren't in a position to keep him around necessarily, so they ended up trading him to the Atlanta Thrashers. And when he went to the Atlanta Thrashers, he spent a couple of seasons there and had some of his best statistical seasons. Now, if even if, whether you know hockey or not, if you don't remember the Atlanta Thrashers, the Atlanta Thrashers were not a very good franchise. Uh, they were around for a while. They, the biggest star was probably Ilya Kovalchuk or uh, Danny Heatley. And in the end, that team got relocated. And they went back to Winnipeg to become the new Winnipeg Jets. Because the old Winnipeg Jets were actually, I think they ended up in uh, Arizona. So Phoenix, and then now I guess they're the Arizona Coyotes now. The NHL was very strange with this relocation business. But anyway, the Atlanta Thrashers ended up back in Winnipeg. But by the time they got there, Hosa was already gone. So when Hosa got an opportunity, he ended up going to go play for the Pittsburgh Penguins. Now the thing is, that year, they were able to put together a great playoff run, got to the Stanley Cup Final, and played the Detroit Red Wings, and they ended up losing in that Stanley Cup Final. Undeterred, to the surprise of some, he ended up not resigning with the Pittsburgh Penguins because he was a free agent by this point, and he ended up going to the Detroit Red Wings. So if you know your basketball, this is kind of almost a Kevin Durant move. You, uh, you ended up going from a team that was playing in the final against somebody or a team that was playing, uh, you know, close to the final in that, in that case. Kevin Durant didn't get to the final, but you end up going to the team that you lost to the year before. So in this case, Marion Hosa went from the Pittsburgh Penguins to the Detroit Red Wings. And wouldn't you know it, the Detroit Red Wings also got to the Stanley Cup final and they ended up playing the Pittsburgh Penguins. Now this time the Pittsburgh Penguins won. So two years, two Stanley Cup Finals, and Marion Hosa has now been on the losing side of two of these Stanley Cup Finals with two different teams. But it gets stranger. Now he's a free agent again. He only signed a one-year deal with Detroit, so he ended up going to the Chicago Blackhawks. And that season, the Chicago Blackhawks got to the Stanley Cup Final. And this time, third time's the charm for Marion Hosa, lucky for him, the Chicago Blackhawks did win the Stanley Cup. So for, for he played on three consecutive Stanley Cup finalists and was finally a Stanley Cup champion in his third try in three seasons. And he ended up winning two more Stanley Cups with the Chicago Blackhawks. So all in all, he ended up with 525 career goals, about 1,100 points in the NHL, and he actually had to retire early because of a skin condition. But he is kind of what I would say, kind of a borderline Hall of Famer. It's hard to deny somebody with 500 goals and three Stanley Cup championships. So it'll be, time will tell if he ends up being in that category or not. But this entire backstory, I needed to give it to you because it's been, it was kind of an unusual career the way everything played out. But this card very much encapsulates it. Plus the card ends up being very unusual with a couple of different things. With all that preamble given to you, I'm gonna show you the card now. This is not the most, the rarest card in my collection. It is not the most expensive card in my collection, but it is, the weirdness of it kind of matches up with the story I just gave you. So this is a 2008 Upper Deck Trilogy, Marion Hossa, Scripted Swatch, Third Star, Near Mint 8. Now, where do I begin with this? I guess number one is this ridiculous holder. It is somehow a legitimate PSA holder. I genuinely had never seen one of these until I got this card, but here we are. And this is a, um, a, jersey, a jersey autograph card. It is a nice card and it is numbered to 100. Like I said, it is not the rarest card, it is not the most expensive card, but it is a very interesting card. But it is interesting for a multitude of reasons. The reason why I gave you that whole background of Marion Hosa is so that you could understand kind of the timeline of the teams that he played for. Well, this card is interesting because it kind of encapsulates at least a sliver of that. Because if you're familiar, if you notice, he is wearing a Pittsburgh Penguins jersey in the card. He is listed as a member of the Detroit Red Wings. And this swatch does not match either the Pittsburgh Penguins or the Detroit Red Wings. And you could speculate on exactly where that autograph comes from. Oh, sorry, the, where the swa uh, jersey swatch comes from. But on the back, they actually give you the information. So again, now on the back, you've got the Detroit Red Wings logo. logo. You've got the name for the Red Wings. You've still got the picture of the Pittsburgh Penguins. Now, if you can see, it's going to be kind of hard to see, so I'm going to try to zoom in a little bit for you. Haven't been used in an official Thrashers NHL game. So it is, in fact, a jersey autograph, number to 100 of Marion Hossa, featuring a picture of him in the Pittsburgh Penguins uniform with a Detroit Red Wings designation 
along with a piece of jersey from an Atlanta Thrashers uniform. Why? Oh, and then of course, in a gigantic, ridiculously oversized PSA holder. So this card is genuinely probably one of the most random and interesting curiosities that I have in the collection. At least that isn't some kind of a weird, you know, pre-war card or something like that, where it would probably have a more interesting backstory. But part of me genuinely wants to know how the heck, who authorized this? Like, who thought this was a good idea? You couldn't get a picture of him in a Thrasher's jersey. You couldn't get a picture of him in a Red Wings jersey. But you got the Thrasher swatch. You know he's in the Red Wings. But then you still have a picture of him on the Penguins. Sometimes stuff like this happens. And that's where you end up in a situation that you can have yourself a nice little story, a kind of a conversation piece where you can look at it and go, like I said, it might not be the most expensive. It might not be the rarest, but it's definitely something with holder and all. So that's really what I wanted to get done with this video. I just wanted to kind of show some cards, have a little fun with the card in the middle and give you a little story. Uh, all in all, I think the, the moral of the story of what I'm trying to get at here as well is that it is possible to still have some fun and to really kind of consider some things, just looking at cards that are already in your collection. Of course, like everybody else, I'm interested in the new hotness and I've got some cards that did come in the mail today and I'll be doing that in a pickup video at the end of the week. And I always look forward to the, to the stuff that comes in and the hunt is part of the fun of collecting. But that doesn't mean you can't get some enjoyment and at least have a good chuckle looking at some of the stuff that's already in your collection, whether it's really shiny and kind of fun from the 90s, whether it's kind of a hidden gem from what should have been a really inexpensive product, or whether it's a card of a borderline Hall of Fame player who somehow happens to have three different teams represented on one card. Even though I'm pretty sure that's not what they would have intended. But I guess they took the trilogy literally. So there you go. Thanks as always for watching. If you've got any questions or comments, I'd be happy to reply to them. And we'll catch you in the next video. Thanks very much.